Sylvester Stallone, wanting the fight scenes in Rocky V to seem real, accompanied Morrison to film a real fight. As Tommy Morrison fought Lorenzo Kennedy, wearing Apollo Creed's trunks, Sylvester Stallone and Burt Young, playing Rocky and Polly, shouted encouragement and instructions to Tommy Gunn, Morrison's fictional character in Rocky V. The result was a sloppy fight from the distracted Morrison, and he was not able to manage the knockouts Stallone apparently hoped to include in the 1990 film. Tonight, including Rocky Balboa himself. His opponents also have a way of disappearing quickly, so stay with us. Don't blink. Well, it's a night of stargazing and a night of future stars. As top ranked boxing plays the South Mountain Arena, we're in West Orange, New Jersey. Hello, everybody. I'm Barry Tompkins, along with ESPN's resident star, Al Bernstein. And Al, let's talk first about the future stars of which we spoke. Ray Mercer certainly thought of in these parts as a future star and star future stars. And we talked about stargazing. And in Tommy Morrison's locker room, there's a little bit of both. Morrison, of course, the glimpse of a future star, but the stargazing being done by everybody around Tommy Morrison these days. There's about 25 people in his locker room right now. And what are they? Not boxing folks, <laughs> but movie folk. That's right. Tommy Morrison, in between knocking out all these heavyweights, a nice little sidelight for him. He is featured in the upcoming Rocky movie. And yes, they are actually filming Tommy Morrison tonight for the Rocky movie. They'll be filming Sly Stallone will be here along with Burt Young in the corner talking to Tommy Morrison. It's either art imitating life or life imitating art. I don't know which. It should be fascinating. And where's Alan Funt when we yes. really need him? So you got your Ray Mercer, you got your Tommy Morrison, you got your Sylvester Stallone, you got a sold out crowd here. What more can you ask for? Big night of boxing. And he's a guy who tonight is a movie actor but is also a fighter. And believe me, folks, he can fight. In between movie shoots, Tommy the Duke Morrison has fashioned a pretty good hobby, knocking out heavyweights. It was Dave Jaco in September with a left hook. And then veteran Harry Terrell became victim number 17. And here, the 20-year-old from Kansas City was up to date with both hands. He would send Terrell down twice before it ended. It all adds up to an undefeated heavyweight who longs for a win tonight, then a date with the ultimate trial horse, James Quick Tillis. Which Al brings us to the rules here in Joycey. The three knockdown rule is in effect. Uh, there is a standing eight count here. The physician has the authority to stop the fight at any time. Three judges will score the fight. Ten point system. Winner of the round gets ten. The loser nine or less. Can't be saved by the bell in any round here in New Jersey. All right. Let's get up to Michael Buffer and meet these two. Michael. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the South Mountain Arena here in West Orange, New Jersey, where tonight, Top Rank Incorporated and the King of Beers, Budweiser, presents professional boxing for your entertainment. These bouts are sanctioned by the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board, Boxing Commissioner Larry Hazard Sr., Deputy Commissioner Lawrence Wallace, and the Chairman is Jerry Gormley. The three judges tonight will be Eugene Grant, Eva Shane, and John Riley. Physicians at ringside, Dr. Earl Shaw, Thomas Ortiz, Dr. Thomas Ortiz, and Dr. Paul Williams. The timekeeper for all the bouts is Lindsey Tucker, and the two referees with the alternate counting for the knockdown seconds will be Tony Orlando and Paul Venti. And now, ladies and gentlemen, this bout is scheduled for six rounds, and it's in the heavyweight division. The referee for this bout is Tony Orlando. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, he's wearing the black trunks with gold trim and weighs an even 233 pounds from the Motor City, Detroit, Michigan, as a professional. Eight victories with two KOs against six defeats and one draw. Ladies and gentlemen, Lorenzo Kennedy. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner. He's wearing the red, white, and blue colors and weighed in at an even 211 pounds from Kansas City. Undefeated as a professional, 19 and 0, 17 KOs. Ladies and gentlemen, Tommy. The Duke Morrison! Gentlemen, you received your instructions. Therefore, you have any questions? I want a good, clean fight. Test clause, go back to your corner. So now it is the business at hand, and the business at hand right at the moment is the boxing match, despite all the celebrity all around this man. 
And in the other corner, Lorenzo Canada, who's mentioned, has got to feel awful lonely. He's wondering what the heck is going on. Of course, uh, all the hoopla around Morrison, and just before we came to use Stallone and Burt Young were in reenacting what would be, for their movie anyway, the scene in the middle of the ring where they uh, get the instructions, and then they left, and the real people came in. And it's a real box table. Should Tommy Morrison win this fight, as I'm sure they have scripted, and most people here figure will happen, they will be back in the ring again for the joyous occasion. Tommy Gunn or Tommy Morris again. Left hand. Started Kennedy off. With Morrison has, of course, a terrific left hook. We've chronicled that in his appearances here on ESPN. He's been working on other parts of his arsenal. We've seen him use the jab and the uppercut and the straight right hand. One thing you have to say about Tommy is he's improved every single outing. And he says he wants to get a little quicker, wants to throw in more punches, stay, stay a little busier, and just generally get a little bit quicker. Kennedy, incidentally, has been in here against the best in the heavyweight division. He fought Mike Tyson. I asked him how that fight was, and I don't know it wasn't there long. was <laughs> fast. Knocked him out in the first round, did Tyson. He also fought Riddick Bowe. He also fought Alex Stewart. So he's been in there against some good ones. Lost to Willie DeWitt, so he is your basic trial horse type. At this point in his career. So he wanted to try to wait for Morrison. Seemingly that means he won't have to wait too long. There's that left hand from Morrison. You always wonder about, and we talk, you talked to Morrison about it earlier today, the distraction of all the stuff going on. Can it affect your performance in the ring? He's not in there against the top heavyweight, but still, the man who's punching back. Right now, it doesn't seem to be Morrison is really focused. He said no, it's the bottom at all. Another right hand, pretty good shot by Morrison, but Kennedy stays there. Not, not he said he thought about being an actor at some point, but he figured it wouldn't come for five or six years. Here he is, 20 years old, and he's going to be in Rocky Six. It's a brilliant strategic ploy by Bill Caden, his manager, to get him all that attention. And if, if he continues to develop as a boxer, uh, it'll put him in a much stronger position. But the boxing, of course, is important because he's got to keep getting better at being in a position to beat these top people. And of course, we're talking about him facing Jim Quintillis on the undercard of Duran Leonard. So. The time span for him, unlike that of Ray Mercer, who we'll see later tonight, is much more relaxed. About two years, they say, the mouthpiece flew out of his mouth, and they will stop the fight to put the mouthpiece back. It was Kennedy's mouthpiece, a big part. So it appears that Lorenzo Kennedy will do something that not too many opponents of Tommy Morrison have been able to do, and that is get through the first round. Moral victory, at least. And to Kennedy's credit, he's not running. He's staying in fighting wars. Kennedy has done just that. So it wasn't much of a problem for Tommy Morrison, but unusual for him. He didn't get his man out of there in the first round. He's fought 17 times this year, incidentally. And a total of 36 rounds. So that'll give you an idea how long his opponents have lasted. And I'll tell you, we saw him on October 17th against Terry Terrell. He came back and fought October 26th again against Charles Hostetter in uh, Kansas City, not the Mountain One. Got a little busier on the inside. Okay. Here's the left hook by Morrison. I just missed right on the nose, but kind of clipped the side of the nose. If that had been a little longer, that punch, uh, who knows what would happen. Missed him by a nose, I guess you could say. I didn't say that. Oh, that was all right. Don't mm. apologize for those. That's I don't know. Terrific humor. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> That's only one man's opinion, though, and I'm That's not right. even sure it's yours. That's right. know. <laughs> so round number two now. Be first. Be first. Be first. Trying to do what he does, and that is dispatch opponents in quick order. Morrison, as we look at our punch profile, not as busy in the first round as Kennedy. But obviously landing more effectively. And that's one thing in a way you like about Tommy Morrison, not a lot of wasted punches. He's been very um, methodical through the times we've seen him box. And a right hand, and Kennedy started to go, but stayed right there. Body shots. 
have been a very effective weapon, incidentally, for Tommy Morrison. When he beat Mike Robinson in Atlantic City, he did so largely with body shots. There is a... Yeah, underneath the eye of Tommy Morrison. Not in a place where it would give him any trouble, but it just popped open, and I think it was that right hand, that straight right hand. Get back! Get back! Kennedy has found a home for that right hand. And the farther Morrison lets Kennedy into this fight, the more Kennedy will think, maybe I can beat this guy. Yeah, I just think an interesting thought. Is Lorenzo Kennedy the real Rocky here looking to go the distance? That's probably it. Morrison doesn't win the fight. Kennedy gets the part. <laughs> <laughs> Should be a lot of stake for Tommy Morrison here. Unfortunate thing here for Kennedy is I'm sure this is not a huge payday for him. He's going to have to use it to join SAG. I think most of his pay away. Such a business partner. Stack, of course, the Screen Actors Guild, I will say that. There's a left hand, but Kennedy's still there. Tommy Morris's left hook tonight is much wider than it's been lately. We've talked before about how it's been a shorter punch. Tonight it is wider and not as effective and not doing as well. Still a little bit of blood from below the eye of Tommy Morrison. It isn't the type of cut that you would think would cause him a great deal of problem because obviously the blood is not going to get into the eye. The cut being below it on the cheek. And not something you would think probably about stopping the body. Tony Orlando is a very fine referee warning Kennedy about the holding. Kennedy getting that left hand in on that cut. You can really see Kennedy's confidence start to swell a little bit here. And we come to the end of the second round. Who'd have thunk it? Say that's a pretty good bet. No question about it. We thought it was a straight right hand from my headbutt. Clash of heads between those two as they came together. And you always wonder what impact does it have with a boxer when he gets cut. Some have come completely unglued. Doesn't look like that has happened to Morrison. And certainly it's not a cut that's in a bad spot for him. I don't think toughness, as we look at the punch profile in round two, is any kind of a problem for Tommy Morrison. He was fighting a tough guy contest when he was 13 years old and won the Oklahoma State tough guy contest at 14. He had a lie about his age. Yeah, he is, he is a tough guy, and, and I doubt that it will have any impact on him. That's a nice pleasant. Yeah, it really is. He's a very good sense of himself, too. He doesn't feel he knows everything right now. He readily admits there are things he has to learn. And as you mentioned, he's on a two-year timetable to Mike Tyson. And again, the mouthpiece of Kennedy has come out. Tony Orlando might be saying, bite down. I think he's kind of lunging yeah. at Kennedy a little bit, not setting down on his punches like he usually does. And yeah, there you have how I scored the first two rounds for Morrison. I thought he won those rather convincingly. And again, a little bit of a clash of heads. And Kennedy did go four rounds without Stewart. And then he went a couple with Rick Bow. Body shot by Morrison. So he can hang in there. Four with Willie DeWitt. Knocked out by Tyson in one, but then that's not too shocking. Yeah, no. A lot of people have had that fate. People even uh, looking for world championships. Kennedy works for the city of Detroit. And he said, very candidly when he asked him this morning, this is a job. He's not a guy who's thinking, I'm going to be the champion of the world. He has an 8-6 and six record, but the record is a little bit deceiving because we mentioned four of those six losses against some pretty good competitors. Yeah, when Lorenzo faces the, the run of the mill heavyweights, he's been able to beat him. Uh, like, for instance, he beat Tracy Thomas. This book decision that was the guy that lost to Mercer a couple of fights ago. Kennedy got right hand in just a moment ago. That wasn't a bad shot at all, and Morrison misses a pair. 
This effort by Tommy Morrison tonight is less precise than previous efforts. Well, you just have to think, and I'm not making excuses for him, but you have to think he was distracted. Huh? We talked to John Brown, who came over a little while ago. He's one of the men in Morrison's corner. And he said, boy, it wasn't that long ago we were in Great Falls, Montana, and it was me and Tommy Morrison. And now Bill Caton's there. There were 25 people in the movie industry, as you mentioned, in his locker room. Things are getting tougher, if only by a matter of numbers, and a right hand by Kennedy at the bell. We'll be back. Here's right at the end of the round. Tommy Morrison with the uppercut, and he takes a right hand. So you can see that he is taking some punches that uh, he hasn't taken in recent fights. And there's a good left hook by Kennedy in what was a, Kennedy's best round at about a very, very close round. So Tommy Morrison, while he doesn't appear to be in any great danger of losing this fight, is really getting all he wants here from Lorenzo Kennedy. And again, you just have to think that he might be a little distracted. And I don't mean to take anything away from Kennedy. But Morrison is wilder than we've seen him. He's not setting down on his punches as we've seen him do. He's not missing a lot. Not throwing as many combinations. Good indication there of how that round went. Kennedy throwing more and landing exactly the same amount as Tommy Morrison. Oh. Right hand by Kennedy. Morrison is getting off slower. There's no question about that. In a recent fight, his jab is not is a pawing jab. It's not as stiff as it's been in other fights. <laughs> left hook by Morrison. That punch not as, as we said, as short. I made the last round even. Uh, so I have got Morrison ahead by two points. It's another case that Morrison got Kennedy in the corner and then missed him. Kennedy, though, is fighting this like he's a sparring partner, honestly. He needs to go after it right now. He knows he's got a guy there who isn't fighting as well as he can fight. He's got to be throwing more. I think Kennedy should be throwing a few more punches, kind of counter him a little bit more. And like that. Good body shot by Kennedy underneath. Kennedy clearly getting the better of it right at the moment. He's having a good fourth round. Another right hand. And Tommy's missing a lot. And Lorenzo is uh, covering up extremely well and countering. Yeah, him. counter left hand right there. The plot is definitely thickening here, I'll tell you. With a little uppercut on the inside by Kennedy. You that punch Morrison's been using. You can really sense Kennedy's confidence growing with every round here. He may run out of rounds, but he's, he seems right at the moment to be a little more willing to do, as you mentioned, to, to stand there and punch with it. If he wins this one, he could be back in the hunt. Well, he threw that right hand with conviction. That was really important. Even in missing it, he threw out the punch with a lot of conviction, and that's what he's going to need to do. He's got Morrison lunging now with that left hook. He's got him thinking, uh, I'm frustrated. I've got to go after this guy and hit him with one punch. And he himself is coming over the top with his right hand. So if he does happen to catch Morrison lunging, that's the right punch. This is real life. That's right. Not the movies. And in this case, uh, Art not following the light. Frustrated, missing, look, and he misses with the hook. He misses with the right hand. And Kennedy just narrowly missed with the counter that he threw right after that. He was in position to hit Morrison. Yeah, Morrison really starting to show a little bit of frustration here. Morrison has been six months before in his career beating Eric Brown in Kansas City back in July. Uh, of this year. Wasn't he a great the defensive end with the Kansas City Chiefs? Was, Aaron, but yes. Not this Aaron Brown. Interesting. Kennedy landing about three more than Morrison, and uh, Tommy not throwing too often. Kennedy right now looking to counter back to the ropes, hoping to catch Morrison lunging in. Now he's covering up. Covering up rather well. And your car. Very close, Morrison, by one point. And remember, in the third round, which was very close, if that one had gone to Kennedy, then uh, this could be an even fight. Six-round fight, remember. Kennedy 
Ray says he's known about this fight for a while, so I asked him what kind of shape he was in. He said fair, and uh, that was a very honest answer. Right now, he doesn't seem to be losing too much. Now, you can see that he's a little wide in the middle there, uh, but uh, he's not falling apart right now. He's not still throwing. This round, both men leaning on each other a little bit more. Well, tonight was a night when we thought we might see a little bit more of what Ray Mercer's about. Good uppercut on the inside by Kennedy because Jones beat Michael Bent. What about Tommy Morrison? Are we finding out a little bit of what, where he is at? I think we might, and he's really found a home for that uppercut. You know what's ironic? I would have expected Harry Terrell, who granted his old uh, for a fight, has a little more experience. I would have expected him to test Morrison more than this guy. Big right hand by Morrison. Might have been his best punch of the fight there, and that may have slowed Kennedy. It did, yeah. looks on unsteady legs right as we speak. That comes back fine. Very important sequence for Kennedy. He's going after Morrison. That uppercut is really there for Kennedy. He has scored with that punch a half a dozen times in this round alone. There it is again. Boy, that, that 20 seconds for Lorenzo Kennedy was vital. Morrison looked like he was ready to take control of this fight completely. And now you have... I want to hear again how the judges look at this. Do they look at that one punch by Morrison and say that was enough? Because Kennedy really has done more than the rest of the round. Probably has. Good, 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 good. And Lorenzo Kennedy, when Tommy Morrison looks across the ring, is still there. They've got to feel some confidence here. Bounce them off his chest into his chin as an uppercut, and then hit him with the hook. Don't be afraid to throw the punches. The last one, let them go. He's there. Where did he go? Come on. Just this is tired of you. More. More. Punch. Come on. Punch. You ain't got nothing to lose. You got everything to gain. Yeah. All right. Come on. Come on. Punch. What you want me to do? Here is the right hand that Morrison landed right to the chin of Lorenzo Kennedy, and it stunned him, was followed up later by yet another right hand. But here, Kennedy with the uppercut, I think he's gonna land a, a, a jab, and then there was a straight right hand in there also. That sequence important for Kennedy. And this now the sixth and final round, and Tommy Morrison bit off a lot tonight. I don't know if the judges are seeing this as close as I am, but I think it's a very close bout. Very hard fight, to be honest, for Lorenzo Kennedy to win. Because again, it's another situation, as you look at our punch profile through the first five rounds, another situation where you have a tendency to watch Tommy Morrison and not watch his opponent. And you can see the numbers favoring Morrison a little bit here now. Probably because those first two rounds, remember, he won by bigger margins. Well, people might be surprised to see this, but I think it's that even fight. I gave Kennedy the last round by the narrowest of margins. Kennedy has run his round by smaller margins than Morrison has, but still, I think he's right in there. Morrison leaning on Kennedy a lot here. But don't necessarily expect this to end up being a draw or a win for Kennedy. No. But he's equipped himself quite well, and, uh, and you can make a strong case for Tommy Morrison with being ahead of this fight. Oh, yeah. But what you can't make a strong case for is the fact that Tommy Morrison came in here ready and focused for this fight. He did not. And he's going to the body, he's going to the right hand, and now he covers up as Morrison top. He wiggled him with that right hand. Finish. Morrison is leaning on Kennedy now. 
See, I think, yes, Tommy Morrison, if he would jab his way in, he uses his jab. It's a very effective weapon when he just tries to throw the big left hook or the overhand right. Coming in, he is less effective. Morrison fighting this fight, backing up, but he's doing a lot of his best work. Either coming off the ropes or with his back to the ropes. Morrison, he hasn't done as much of that as he would like with that wide girth of uh, Kennedy. You think you want to work on that a little bit. See, Morrison coming in with that right hand. Got to jab your way in. I would think he could really start to get that putting people away as easily as Tommy Morrison had coming into this fight. The crowd doesn't really like it too much. You have the feeling that Morrison probably did enough. Well, when uh, that man scripts it, you know it's going to be a win for Tommy Morrison, but what about in real life? What do the judges have to say about it? <laughs> now that's, that remains to be seen. Now, I'm sure, though, for movie purposes, that cut under Morrison's eye is probably a lot more effective. <laughs> it probably is. You don't think they scripted that, do you? No. Anyway, as you look at uh, them get ready for the fictional part of this, in nonfiction, um, that man, Lorenzo Kennedy, had his moments. And I'll tell you, had he had a little more sting in that right hand and some of those uppercuts, he He's might have been able to get to Tommy Morrison a little bit. And for Tommy, he knows, I mean, he knows that this was an effort in which he didn't, he wasn't as focused as he would like to be, didn't put his punches together as much as he would like. And uh, we look at Kennedy under, working underneath the uppercut landing, body shot off the arm. But look, you see, not everything landing, but enough there is landing to show that Kennedy was right there in this in this fight. And I have to say, I ultimately ended up giving it to Morrison by one point. But, uh, could be close. Well, we'll see how close it is. Let's go right now to Michael Buffer, who has the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, here's the official scoring. John Riley and Eugene Grant both scored about 60 to 54. Eva Shane has it 59, 55 for the winner. By unanimous decision, still undefeated, Tommy Duke <laughs> Gosh, I guess I saw it differently than the judges, eh? Now there's an upset. Tommy Morrison wins the fight, and we thought he won the fight too, but we, they thought, two of the judges thought, he pitched a shutout. What do you think, folks? We'll be back.